Hi everyone, great to see you again. Uh, my name is Ollie and I'm a professional cooking teacher at Pearson School of Culinary Arts in Montreal. And today I would like to share my banana bread recipe with you guys. Um, so let's get right into it. What do we need today? Underneath the video you have the recipe. And in the way of equipment, we're going to need a bread tin or loaf pan. Uh, you could also make this as banana muffins and use a muffin tin if you have it. I've lined it with parchment paper and I've just buttered the parchment paper also. You can use uh, vegetable oil if you like, just to make sure it definitely won't stick. We need two mixing bowls, a spatula or a wooden spoon, a whisk, a toothpick or a wooden skewer, and a fork, and we're good to go. So first things first, we are gonna take our dry ingredients, the flour, all-purpose flour, our caster sugar, white sugar, Our soft brown sugar or demerara sugar, baking powder, a little bit of salt, and we're just going to give it a little whisk up just to break up all the sugar and to make sure it's, it's all mixed a little bit. And then we can put that to one side for a second. And then in this bowl, we're going to do our wet ingredients. So starting with our bananas, speckled, a little bit soft already. These are perfect for banana bread. What you can also do when your bananas are starting to go bad, rather than throwing them away, you can put them in a Ziploc into your freezer. And then once you get to three, you can, start, you can take them out of the freezer and make banana bread. And they turn themselves into puree in the freezer too, which is handy. So just using our hands, we're going to start to turn the bananas into a puree in the skins. We'll do that for all three. And then if your bananas also aren't quite ripe and you want to make banana bread and you know the day before that you want to make it, you can do this the day before and it's going to help to speed up the ripening process. You don't want to do it with hard bananas. It's not going to be a very tasty banana bread. So we'll squeeze them into the bowl. Three medium sized. And as you can see, they've already started to turn into a puree nicely. And then the last one. Like so, and then we're going to take our fork and we're just going to carry on the mashing process. It doesn't take long. The riper the bananas are, the easier it is to make the puree. So that's that. That's good. Now we're going to incorporate all the rest of our wet ingredients into there. So we're going to take our vanilla extract. You could use fresh vanilla if you like. Um, one pod, scrape out the seeds would be good. Vegetable oil. You could also use canola if you have canola. Our eggs, two eggs, I've just whipped them, I've whisked them up on their own already to, to start the process. That. A little bit of sour cream. And then we're going to use this whisk. Okay, and then now we're going to start to really mix in those wet ingredients. We want everything incorporated. And then just twisting the whisk to make sure that the bananas are really pureed. It doesn't matter if you have a couple of lumps, it's actually quite nice in the bread. It gives a different texture. So, we have our dry, we have our wet. We're going to turn the oven on to 350 degrees. And then what we want to do now, we're going to incorporate the wet into the dry. So we're using our plastic spatula or spoon. And mix this in. It's starting to smell pretty good already. And then we don't want to beat it too ferociously. We're going to just fold it. We're doing like a figure of eight motion. And then we want to do this until it's everything is just incorporated together. We don't want to overwork it. It's going to create a, a heavy cake. 
And then once you can see that most of the flower has been incorporated into the wet ingredients, we can then take our chocolate and nuts. In the recipe it says two thirds of a cup, one third of a cup of chocolate, one third of a cup of walnuts. I have semi-sweet chocolate and toasted walnuts. You can swap out these two ingredients for anything. You can do pecans, white chocolate, dark chocolate. You could do flaked coconut, uh, goji berries. I like to put chia seeds in my banana bread too. And um, as long as you respect the ratio of uh, two thirds of a cup of mix-ins, you can change them for whatever you like. So now we're gonna put these in. We put them in last because we don't want them to break up too much. And this way, because the mixture's already, um, it's already mixed in together, they won't sink to the bottom. They'll be evenly spread out through the loaf. So again, very gently, just folding, not beating it too much. And then once the nuts and chocolate are nicely incorporated, it's ready to go in our tin. Take my pre-prepared tin, I'm just going to spoon it in. Like this. Sure, we get everything. We'll save a little bit, and we might want to clean the bowl out after. And then, just going to tap it down, make sure it's all the way into the corners. And then, what I like to do, just to do a little bit extra, I like to put my banana also on top of the cake. So, I'm going to take one of the bananas that I didn't mush up. Peel, and then I'm going to take a couple of rounds, a couple of discs straight down, and then I'm going to put these, I'll show you afterwards, I'm going to put these onto the top in a nice decoration so that it looks like a nice presentable cake afterwards. Put a half in there as well. I'm not pushing it too far in. And that's good, this one I'll eat. I'll take some half rounds, to half, half moons. And then, let me see if I can just bring that forwards for you a little bit. As you can see, I've just placed the bananas in a nice, a nice way that I think is gonna look nice after it baked. I'm also gonna take a little bit of extra brown sugar, and I'm gonna sprinkle this on top of the bananas so we get a little bit of caramelization once they're baking in the oven. Okay, this is ready to go in the oven. The oven's at 350 degrees. It's gonna take between 50 to 60 minutes. I'm gonna put that in the middle shelf. And in fact, I'm gonna put the banana bread tin on another tray. This is going to stop the dough from direct heat going into the bottom of our loaf tin um, and maybe browning too much. Put that in. I have a timer set and I have one that I've made just before so you guys can see it. You see how nice it is with the bananas that were sliced on top? So, what you do after 50 minutes, you're going to take your, your toothpick or your skewer we're going to put it into the center, we're going to pull it out, and if it comes out clean with no raw batter on it, it's cooked, it's ready to go. If some raw batter does come out, give it another five minutes, test it again. If it's still not cooked, another five, do it in increments of five minutes each time so you don't overcook it by mistake. And then, because we put the parchment paper on, it's very easy to take out. I'm going to show you guys. That would be lovely just with a cup of tea and a slice. It would be really nice. But, like I say, we always want to do a little bit more. So I'm going to show you how you can quite simply turn it into a pretty painted dessert. So we're going to take a nice slice of our banana cake. this, 
put that in the middle of the plate. And then what I have over here, I have some mascarpone, mascarpone cheese, which I've just whipped up with a little bit of icing sugar. I put it in a piping bag with a little um, round nozzle at the bottom. And I'm just gonna do a couple of little dots of mascarpone. This has got a really nice texture and it goes really well with the, the chocolate and the, um, the walnuts. I'm gonna take some mint leaves. I'm just gonna pick off some nice mint leaves. Put them on top of some of the mascarpone. This is the fun part. Not too fun, isn't it really? I like uh, the plating part. So like that, maybe just a couple. Take a little bit of icing sugar. Just dust a little bit on top. And then, if I can bring that to the camera a little bit, here we have our um, walnut and our walnut and uh, milk chocolate um, banana cake with whipped mascarpone, mint, and icing sugar. Enjoy, happy cooking, and I look forward to seeing you all again. Take care.